In this video, we will be discussing why and how the Necronomicon is considered as the world's most dangerous book. Ever wondered what the Necronomicon is? The Necronomicon is a book also known as the Book of the Dead. This book does not exist and is only the work of the author's imagination. It is a classic book of forbidden knowledge, the kind which contents endanger one's sanity. It is also one of the focal points of Lovecraft's Cthulhu mythos. Author of strange fiction, H.P. Lovecraft invented a mythology that included strange creatures, disturbed communities, crazy scholars, and a library of books containing secret knowledge. Lovecraft claims that the Necronomicon is a book full of secrets and rituals that may drive a reader to the verge of insanity. It is surely the most intriguing of all the volumes describing his mythology that he references within his own literature. In Lovecraft's literature, the look and size of the Necronomicon are never explicitly specified, but it is frequently described as being bound in leather of various varieties and having metal clasps, though there are also black leather versions. Some editions are also simply covered up. An article by Jonathan Strickland accounts what's actually in the Necronomicon. According to Strickland, Alhazred, the author of the Necronomicon, mostly wrote of a variety of different creatures, specifically extraterrestrial creatures with immense power. Alhazred referred to these creatures as the Old Ones, which Lovecraft uses as a term to describe a group of bizarre alien creatures. The Necronomicon contains magical spells as well as different incantations that can actually summon monsters and deities. In the history of the Necronomicon, it states that whoever studies the text is likely inherently dangerous, and whoever attempts to master it will definitely meet a chaotic end. In one of these articles investigating the origins of the Necronomicon, it says that it's only logical that the Necronomicon could only exist in a cosmos where ancient, godlike creatures would bring their fury to anyone who attempts to awaken them. According to what Lovecraft reveals inside his novels, Alhazred spoke largely about the Old Ones, and it was even said that reading certain portions from the book would awaken them and drive readers insane. Lovecraft provides us a lengthy section from the Necronomicon in Dunwich Horror, which is focused on yogg sothoth Cthulhu, a far more well-known monster, who is also referenced as a monster that dwells at the bottom of the ocean. Abdul Alhazred, the Mad Arab, was the man Lovecraft credited as the author of the Necronomicon. He died in 738 AD, and was believed to have been eaten by one or more invisible creatures. Abdul Alhazred, in the context of fictional Cthulhu mythos, was a poet who was born in Yemen. In the 8th century, he lived in Damascus. He was also a traveler who could easily adapt to his environment and explored the Middle East and Europe. He was an intelligent person that learned and could translate different languages. Different books of Alhazred were entitled as Al-Azif, which was created with the noise of insects at night, though some scholars believe that it came not from insects' noise, but rather the sounds of creatures and demons howling. Abdul Alhazred was a character invented by Lovecraft when he was imagining himself going on an adventure in the stories of Arabian Nights by Andrew Lang. Lovecraft declared his intention to one day compose the Necronomicon. He believed that inventing an old literature from scratch to support his mythology would be a lot of fun. Lovecraft frequently discussed the Necronomicon in his writings, which rambled on about anything from Roman history to literature. He said that Gothic fiction, which frequently contained old books and prohibited literature, served as the inspiration for the Necronomicon. According to an article of Martina Booth's entitled The Truth Behind the Book of the Dead, Necronomicon, Lovecraft said that in 1692, during the witch trials in Salem, a private library kept a secret copy of the last Greek version of the Necronomicon before it was set on fire. Authentic copies existed in five different libraries, according to History of Necronomicon of Lovecraft. In the article, it says that the original copies were in the British Museum, Widener Library of Harvard University of Cambridge, the Library of Fictional Miskatonic University in the city of Arkham, Massachusetts, the University of Buenos Aires, and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. In 950 AD, the original manuscript's name, Necronomicon, was credited to Theodorus Philetus of Constantinople, 
who is claimed to have translated it from Arabic to Greek. Regarding the Necronomicon name itself, it certainly has an ominous sound about it. According to Lovecraft, the title's Greek translation was An Image of the Law of the Dead. Did you think that the Necronomicon was real? Unfortunately, as I said before in the first part of this video, the book is purely a work of fiction of the author's imagination. The Necronomicon did have just the right amount of legitimacy to give it the impression that it was a real book. With a real Greek name, actual historical figures, and real places, Lovecraft was able to give his invention life by incorporating reality into the mythos. It's actually lucky for us that this book does not exist today, considering it is the most dangerous book. The truth is, there's no historic evidence of any book called the Necronomicon existing before Lovecraft. It really was just a prop that Lovecraft invented to spice up his novels. But the Necronomicon does possess a certain strength. Even though people know that the real book doesn't exist, there's magic at work that can't be disproved. When Lovecraft came up with the Necronomicon and his mad era poet, he produced a potent notion. A concept so compelling that over a century after it was originally referenced in his short tale The Hound, people still think it's real. Despite Lovecraft's assurances that his Necronomicon is fiction, some of his followers continue to hold the belief that it's real. Regardless, the Necronomicon is a potent representation of evil. The Necronomicon has also been used in Lovecraft's different short stories and novels, such as At the Mountains of Madness, as well as The Cases of Dexter Ward. Despite the fact that the Necronomicon is mentioned in Lovecraft's stories, there's still no evidence of its contents, because he once wrote that if he ever tried to write the Necronomicon, it would disappoint all those who have shuddered at the cryptic references to it. Avon Books published books, including the work and stories of Lovecraft. They also published and created a version of the Necronomicon, called Simon's Necronomicon. You may be wondering why it's called that. Well, because a man only known as Simon introduces it, so it's known as Simon's Necronomicon. The book makes the claim that Sumerian mythology is the source of its ideas, although it really depends more heavily on Babylonian mythology, and its preface tries to identify the imaginary Great Old Ones with gods and demons from Sumer Babylonia. Sadly, the Necronomicon has received some real negative publicity. The book, for instance, was included as evidence in the murder trials of Glenn Mason and Roderick Farrell, with claims that it was involved in satanic human sacrifices. According to rumors, Farrell used the book for cult rituals. What do you think would happen if the book Lovecraft regarded as the most dangerous book, Necronomicon, existed in today's world? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We will see you on the next video.